Okay, Nick, it's time for us to jump into your solo creating um, process. All right. And uh, this is really the good stuff. Um, I really look forward to this. But before we get started really into the nitty gritty, I wanted to tell folks about uh, the conversation we had leading up to this course because we were doing some planning um, yeah. over the phone and I asked what type of player you were, or you considered yourselves when it comes to improvisation versus creating a solo. Yeah. And, um, and I was kind of surprised by what you told me, but, but not really, because I, I find that there's two types of people out there. Yeah. There's a type that I would say I'm more of, where when I know that I have time to create a solo, like if I'm going in to record a project, yeah. or I'm going to play a show with somebody, I know which songs we're going to play, mm -hmm. I will sit down and and probably create and practice something that's quite a bit different than what I might do improvisationally, just on the spot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's simply because I have time to think about it, and um, I can work out some of the more trickier licks. Um, whereas improvisationally, I'm... I'm pulling from the most accessible skills that I have. Yeah. You know, um, there's another type of folk that I'm really jealous of, and that's <laughs> folks like you. Oh. <laughs> and these are the guys and gals that essentially approach everything the same. You know, I asked you if you had your solos worked out, you know, ahead of time before you went in to record your first album with Special C. You were mm -hmm. like, well, not really. I just listened to the song in the studio and, and played what I thought was was tasty and yeah oh those guys <laughs> well, the thing is is like we couldn't really practice because the arrangements were really arranged in the studio yeah. so we didn't know where we were going to be taking solos on the in the song so it's like well i don't want to practice something get something and then find out that's going to be where the guitar goes you right. know so it's, it was a little tough and which album was that people want to go to listen long i ride long i ride the first special consensus I long on. i ride and yeah. that's you on mandolin that's your that was essentially one of the first things you did with the band right yeah um i my first gig with the band was in no the end of november and then that next month uh i moved packed up moved down here and then we started recording like a week later wow. Well, I want to talk about one more thing there before yeah. we dive in, and that's a story that you told me about Allison Brown, mm -hmm. the producer. Yep. Uh, tell me the exchange that you had, and you know, as you were recording and, and take, doing these takes in the studio, yeah. you were trying to kind of mimic players that you admired. Yeah, I, um, and like I told you that this is um, this was one, like the first big time record I was part of, so mm -hmm. I was. Going in there, not knowing what to expect, and I was thinking, well, what would some of my player, my favorite players do? Like, what kind of licks of, would, would they put in here? And so I would come up with solos on the fly because we just arranged the song, mm -hmm. and you know, thinking, yeah, you know what, I think that sounds pretty good. I'm, I'm liking this. Then Allison Brown, producer of Compass Records, she, um, she would come back say, yeah, okay, that was great, but do that again, and it's about forty five percent less. Really, I'm like. Okay, okay, so I tried to get. What she meant was 45% less notes and Yeah, less. just less stuff. Just less, less stuff. stuff. And, and she, is, that's where I learned the less is more mm. approach. Because you don't want to try to slam everything, every lick you know around or in with a melody. If you let that melody breathe every mm. now and then, it, it's amazing how much more tasteful it can sound. Yeah. And the less is more, I've, I've kind of leaned on that ever since. Yeah, I feel like that that's a process that every player, if they play long enough, mm -hmm. will go through. Oh, yeah. It takes longer and for some, shorter than for others. Mm -hmm. um, but essentially, when you first start playing, that's all you can do is less. Yeah. And then you learn all these licks, you get better, yeah. and then you fit you, them all in. You want to throw them all in, you, you want to get them. And then you them. usually get humbled by somebody that's bold enough to say, Knock it off. Yeah. And then you go back to sounding more like a polished version of, of you bef before. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And she was telling me, you know, just listen to the melody of the song and work around that. Don't erase the melody, mm. but, but add certain things to around that melody to make it just easy on the ears, not just like a whole, so many licks, you right, know? Right, right. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Well, we're going to now look at some techniques that um, you use, and we'll use some songs as examples. So yeah. click on the next video segment beneath this one, and you'll be able to see those.